Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, February 21st, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. The day today published a follow-up to an earlier diary that he published uh, regarding Suricata rules for OneNote files. Now, OneNote files is still a big deal, is still actively being abused in order uh, to bypass some of the macro restrictions that Microsoft has put in place. So having good rules to detect these kind of attacks remains very valuable. The one thing that uh, Didier really adds in this uh, new diary entry is detailed explanations as to what these rules are looking for. And this is, of course, uh, very helpful as attacks evolve, as different file types may be used, or as these OneNote files are used differently to understand what these rules are able to detect and what they're not able to detect, but also how to possibly adjust them if you ever need to modify these rules uh, to you know, make them work with new variations of these attacks. And talking about new attacks, Symantec has an interesting write-up about a new Microsoft IIS a backdoor that's being used in order to gain persistent access to a compromised IIS server. So the backdoor itself is not really the weakness here. It's the result of another vulnerability, maybe in your application, maybe in your configuration that's then being used to install this backdoor. What makes this backdoor unique is that it injects itself into an existing legitimate DLL. Symantec calls this backdoor, and I hope I'm pronouncing it right here, FREP and IIS. The first part, FREB, that comes from the failed request event buffering, that's the actual feature kind of being abused here. Failed request event buffering is implemented by a DLL, ISFREB.DLL, and it's used in order to trace failed requests to help you debug what's going on uh, with failed requests. Uh, the malware will enable this feature, which will load this DLL, and then the malware will inject itself into this DLL, which of course, because it's meant to debug requests, has access to all requests that are processed by IIS. So now the malware has access to the data, it's able to exfiltrate data, it's able to list for commands coming in with not modifying any files on the system and also only loading legitimate uh, features, it is pretty difficult then uh, to figure out whether or not you are affected. Particular uh, detection mechanism here may be whether or not this feature is enabled. Of course, uh, this uh, failed request event buffering may be something that's enabled legitimately, uh, you have to double check on that. Uh, it does implement a particular backdoor using logon.aspx and default.aspx as a request with a specific password. But of course, this is something that's likely going to change in particular uh, with uh, this article uh, being uh, published now. You'll find a link uh, to the article in the show notes, but uh, yeah, it lists all the hashes and such. Uh, not sure how valuable they are. It's really about uh, detecting this technique uh, versus the particular artifacts that Symantec observed. And Outlook.com users are complaining about a flood of incoming spam, apparently due to malfunctioning spam filters at Microsoft. There has been some public acknowledgement via their status page, but not really any details, just the observation that many users see essentially no email being filtered, but most email going straight in their inbox instead of their spam box. This, of course, has some security implication in the sense that much spam is often also phishing and uh, other malicious attempt, which may not get filtered either. And GoDaddy revealed that, uh, well, they uh, did experience 
a breach that apparently lasted multiple years until it was now fully discovered. Uh, one of the important uh, things I want to mention about this breach is that uh, the actor who compromised uh, GoDaddy apparently used their access to randomly redirect websites hosted within GoDaddy's cPanel infrastructure to malicious content. So you may have, for example, a website that's hosted on GoDaddy that's perfectly fine and secure, but because they had this insider access to GoDaddy, they were able to, for example, redirect these websites to phishing content or other malicious content. Well, that's it for today. Uh, thanks again for listening. And as usual, please spread the word about this podcast. Uh, thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.